Well, howdy tubers, I hope you can hear me, it's raining. Uh, I've got a project that I'm fixing to jump into. It's been several years in the making, it's probably going to be a long, at least year long process. I've always wanted a, a nice motorhome. When I, when I was just out of high school, uh, I did some drag racing and some riding around, did different, some different kinds of racing and pulled my little race car trailer around with an old junk motorhome I had. And it worked really good, I loved it. And and I always wanted a big diesel pusher, you know, they're extremely expensive, more than I ever, would ever be able to afford. Uh, and the, the old junky Class A's that you buy, you know, that are on one ton Ford or Chevrolet chassis, they got gasoline engines and, and significant, uh, you know, the brakes aren't big enough, the brakes are too small, they're junk. You know, they're absolutely, absolutely junk. And they're still ridiculously expensive. And uh, and I, I started dreaming about building a, a toter home, scratch built toter home with a big truck front end on it. This is, uh, you know, the year, uh, the year's probably about uh, 2010 or 11, maybe 12. And I started looking for a truck. I, I, I was looking for, specifically for a 359 Peterbilt you know, something in the 80s, uh, you know, 346, uh, maybe, a, maybe a big cam, you know, whatever. But I wanted something cool. And I ran across this truck. Uh, I actually videoed, I, we, I cranked it up yesterday. And, uh, and, 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 you know, this video's kind of backwards. I shot, you know, the parts you're fixing to watch next. I actually shot yesterday <clears throat> and whatever. Anyway, went and cranked it up, but it's a it's a 77 model 359. It's got a 1693 cat in it with a 13 speed and 410 rear end gears. That's a 5.4 inch bore cat, the old school cats, twin overhead cam. Uh, 800, I think it's 893 cubic inch. But don't quote me on that. Uh, really cool motors. Uh, they, they sound really distinct. They sound like they're full of marbles is the best way I can describe them. They're a PC motor, pre-combustion chamber as compared to, to a direct injected engine. Uh, they're, really, they're really cool engines. They get terrible fuel mileage. They're real cold nature and smoky. Uh, you go back, you know, in the 70s and they were king. Uh, they were, you know, 425 horsepower when the you know, the biggest Cummins you get was a 300, and uh, the Detroit was a 318. You know, they were a leap and a bound ahead of everything else. I found it on eBay, like I say, and hired a guy to drive it home, and got here. It's a pretty cool old truck. You know, I like them. I like old cool things. I drive a 64 model Ford Falcon every day as a daily driver car. And I got an 85 model Suburban. It's my kind of my vacation mobile. Anyway, but I went to designing this motorhome. Went back and forth and back and forth. Uh, the, it it was it was took me years. Like about I bought that truck probably at about 14 or 15. It's been five years ago, something like that. Maybe maybe I think that it was in July of 15. So it's been four and a half years ago, whatever. Anyway, at that point, I started designing this motorhome. And the, the designing process was extremely complicated. You know, there's so much. Uh, it's got, mine's gonna have a relatively sophisticated electrical system. I wanna put a an oversized generator, like a 38 kVA generator is what I got dug up. The reason being is I bought some land in Colorado. I would like to possibly purchase a few pieces of land sort of around the United States that I could go park this thing and hang out on. You know, if you go, you can buy land anywhere cheap if you don't buy it exactly where everyone else wants it. You know, you get kind of in the crappy part of Colorado, you can buy land for three or four hundred bucks an acre. You know, you buy you a five acre plot of land for fifteen hundred dollars. And that's kind of my idea, you know, maybe buy some land in, in Colorado and maybe maybe farther out west or something in a spot. Build your little shop, you can park your motor home in, you know, drive out there, jump in your coach and, and then drive in an hour to wherever you actually want to go, you know, to the places like, 
I don't know if you want to go to Red River, New Mexico, where everything's freaking ridiculously expensive. You know, you don't have to drive it all the way out there every time. You know, you can just, you know, buzz up there and pick it up, whatever. Anyway, I wanted to build a shop off grid on a cheap chunk of land you can buy somewhere and and put you know a shower in it electric heat wire the complete thing where you pull up here plug it into the motorhome crank the generator up and have enough power to run anything you want to do you know as much power as you've got in a residential house um, in doing that i know that my generator is going to be oversized and inefficient and i wanted to take a relatively large battery bank probably like a thousand amp hour battery bank at 24 volts a large inverter charger system to where you can take that generator and only run it like a few hours in the morning and a few hours in the evening to charge your battery bank and then throughout the day you can run your couple air conditioners your hot water heater cook lunch whatever and i want to go total electric there's not going to be any propane just for ease of you know keeping up with everything we don't have to keep propane bottle full it's going to have a large fuel tank, 350 gallons of fuel. Anyway, designing all that, your electrical system is going to have several different panels and control panels and switches and several double pole, double throw contactors uh, to make all this work. It's going to have an instant electric hot water heater, like a 13 kVA hot water heater. Uh, also designing, you know, like all the braces and stuff, you know, you got to have your a turd tank underneath your uh, your shower, I mean under your toilet. You gotta make sure it's not a, a wheel in the way or a generator or brace or whatever. You know, and you wanna lay out all your windows where everything looks correct. You want it was it's complicated. I worked years on it. I drew it up in a CAD program, uh, used a uh, uh, some kind of cheap little like home design app, you know, and then I actually took and, and laid a lot of it out on, on, on my shop floor as far as drawing walls and and taking some junk plywood and laying them up where you can sort of bend over in the bathroom, make sure your head don't hit the wall when you're putting your pants on and and you know you got room to turn around in the bedroom and get dressed and you know it was it was it's hard a lot a lot more difficult than I expected to make all that stuff work because it's not like a house where everything's just flat. And, you know, this goes here and this goes here and that goes there and you, you know, the shore line goes into concrete. It was, it was relatively complicated. I spent years, you know, where all the air conditioners go, where you've got the right brace and the right cutout for the hole that the air conditioner, you know, blows the air through. You know, you don't have a rafter or whatever right, right in the middle of this or right in the middle of that. Or that the cabinets don't cover up a window because you use every single inch of space. Uh, anyway, I'm fixing to start this project. I'm really excited. It's probably going to last a year. Uh, if, if anybody's interested in building a motor home or toter home on this scale or a smaller one, uh, hopefully this will be some good information to you. You'll get to see what worked and what didn't in my screw-ups. I'm sure there'll be plenty. Um, I've got pages and pages and pages of notes about how everything is going to lay out, what goes where. Uh, you know, lighting, you know, you got to figure out where your lights are going to go before you run the wire and spray foam it because then you're kind of, you know, you have trouble running the wire after it's a little spray foam. Excuse me. Anyway, I, I hope I hope it's a it's a learning experience for someone other than just me. <clears throat> I, I hope y'all will get a get a kick out of this. If, if you want to watch this, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Uh, my, I don't have a real busy channel. There's just a few things. I, I catch a little bit of you know, we do some machine work and and we're in the old business uh, and some old field related crap. You know, there's a few videos I put up that comes through here. But for the next year, this is going to be my project. And I'm going to try to have a video up every week or every couple of weeks. Depending, obviously, I'm employed full time with all the junk I own. Keep my junk running. And so I don't, you know, I do other things than just work on this if I get tied up working i won't be able to work on this and we might skip a video in a week or something but anyway uh if you want to watch it please please subscribe to my channel uh like the videos that helps me out and uh and, and i'll spread this around i think it's gonna be pretty cool i think uh, i think we'll have a blast i can't wait to can't wait to get started like i say i shot the video you're fixing to watch next yesterday 
but uh, as as far as the progression of the video, let's go uh, let's go crank up the truck. <laughs> All right, sorry about the wind. Here's the the truck. It's a '77 Pete. It's in uh, various stages of disrepair, as you can tell. Uh, I bought this thing in L.A. and got it back and went to work on it. I got it 90% done, but didn't finish it. It's got a, several things that need finished up. Obviously, the headlight. The uh, it's got a 1693 cat in it. I'll open the hood in a minute. I'm gonna see if it'll start it. The batteries were completely dead. And I hate to buy sets yet because they'll just sit for the next year while I build this coach. But I got a charger on them. Hopefully it'll crank. Um, it's got a 1693 cat. It's a decent old truck. The paint's not a million dollars. It's kind of more for there. And, but it's, you know, it's decent. It looks nice if you passed it going down the road. Uh, the interior's decent. Um, You can see how long it's been sitting here because it's got a Walmart sack or something that has come. All the pieces turned to confetti. 1693 is an indirect injected engine. It's got glow plugs. Uh, you'll turn the heat start switch backwards for however long, 20 seconds or so. Uh, it's about 60 degrees outside. These engines are extremely cold natured. And if you're fixing to see, even at 60 degrees, they don't necessarily just start right up. The fuel may be drained back or something too. It's been, gosh, months, probably close to a year since this thing's actually started. At least six months. Hopefully light. There we go. Look at there. I can't believe that thing started that easy. As you can see, they're pretty smoky. I wondered if the oil pressure regulator is hung or something that builds a lot of pressure. It's got a hydraulic crank saver. I guess it was kicked in. We'll build up a little air here and I'll show you. Built some heat in it too. It's got a 13 speed transmission. Uh, it needs a the AC blower motor was bad. I already replaced it. It's got a few hoses be hooked up. I replaced all the hoses in the dash. I'm gonna put a new set of seats in it. The seats are horrible. They're like seats out of a minivan or something on an air ride. see many of those anymore I didn't put a radio in it mm -hmm. a set of cheap speakers somebody had cut the dash out here and put three toggle switches for the low medium high on the air conditioner this made me sick and I was usually done with a toggle switch up here and I uh, I don't know what I'm going to put here. I'm going to put some switches or something to control. Maybe start and stop on the generator and an air valve there. I'm going to put a fairly large air tank on the coach part. It will also be aired up by the generator. Uh, maybe a, a valve where you can air it up for the truck if you're going on the road. Chambers cooled my antifreeze, 
And a PC motor will have more heat rejection than a, than a DI motor. And it takes through the radiators. You notice this thing's got a huge radiator on it. It's like eight or ten cores thick. And the grain old big and two of the fans is as big as the radiator. It's direct drive. Plan on pulling the fuel tanks off. I'm gonna cut the frame right behind the cab. It's gonna have a couple of dog legs in the frame. I'd probably have to move the air tanks outboard of the frame because this frame's gonna come down. A couple of frames gonna be down here or something. Don't twin screw it. Um, I'll show you this doesn't have jake brakes. I never made a jake brake for a 1693. They never made jake brakes for a 1693. It's got a hydraulic brake saver. They're like a torque converter with one side of the torque converter locked. And this controls a, a valve, it's an air actuated valve that either pumps or sucks the oil out or puts into a, it's like part of the flywheel housing and it's made sort of like a torque converter. It's not actually the flywheel, but it's in the same area and it's got a seal before you, the oil gets out to the flywheel. But anyway, <clears throat> we rev it up here. We'll get it up here, say, to about 2,000. Pull the brake saver down and it'll load the motor up here. here. And release it. The motor unloads. Well, that's pretty cool. You go down the mountain, you just pull that in and keep the motor wound up. It's got a 13 speed in it. And it dumps all that heat in your oil system. This is the engine oil, you know, brake saver engine oil temperature. And I've always heard that they're kind of problematic if they leak and stuff, but I don't mind for dangerous things. Smokes like a freight train. You know, you hammer it, it just... <laughs> anyway, these I think these are cool trucks and cool cool engines. I looked for years for one of these and found this engine, this truck in LA and hired a guy to go pick it up for me. So the coach part of this is going to be about 30 feet, 4 inches, something like that. Here's sort of a layout of the floor plan. Uh, here's a few pages. Uh, this is sort of me figuring some weights and prices of steel. This is a stud layout. It's going to be a mirror image front to back. And this is actually the uh, inner fender that I've designed. Uh, here's a layout CAD program, what it's going to sort of look like, and some structure elements. Like I said, I've got pages and pages and pages of notes other than this stuff. I don't, I'm going to try to keep a cost tally. I've said that on a few other projects to, uh, to be able to say when I'm done with it what it actually cost me. Uh, I know it's going to be expensive, but I think it'll be much cheaper than anything I could have bought. Anyway, hope you all enjoy this. Uh, we're going to get started. I'm going to try to have a video up next week. I'm going to start on the uh, on the frame portion of it.